Assalamu alaikum and thank you for joining us again today. If you step outside of your home by the time you get to school, college or work, you would have been bombarded with an image of a beautiful woman advertising a product. Women are often defined by their bodies and as such, their personality, intellect, contributions to society, and they can often be underestimated. Where are the women who should be today's role models? We have the examples of Lady Fatima and Lady Zainab السلام, to aspire to. However, are there women in our lives today that we can also look up to? What does it mean to be a role model? So, ladies, how are women perceived today? I mean, we can always look back on the status of a woman um, during the time of Say uh, Sayyidah Fatima and Sayyidah Zainab السلام, and they were treated with the highest status mm -hmm. and especially with Sayyidah Fatima السلام, she was one of the infallibles mm -hmm. and she's the only woman. So in this day and age, she is that person that we do end up looking up to. She is our role model because she has kind of shown us what the way that we should be living the way that we need to present ourselves, how we should speak, what we should do in terms of charity, in terms of uh, hijab, in, ter in terms of how we treat our parents. And the list can go on. So what do you think about that? So I do agree with everything that you've said. Um, however, going back to the point uh, that you first mentioned about a woman objectified nowadays, um, realistically speaking, yes. Um, what we can see on billboards, as you've mentioned, the media is, is usually women portrayed in a more physical uh, way. And um, we can, I guess, generalize and say that most men seek this. However, it does depend upon the person. Um, there is there is guys out there who, no matter where you're from or who you are, what educa education is and how smart you are, they wouldn't care. Um, mm -hmm. They just look above all of this and only care about your physique. Um, other men on the other side would completely overlook how you look like, but only care about your intellect, your soul, um, the deep conversations you can have, your opinions and your values. And it does depend from one person to another. I think we jump really quickly in judging all men and saying they're all the same, um, we just objectify women. But I think it does it does depend from one person yeah, to another. I, th I think nowadays, though, that everything that is sold or portrayed, like they use a woman, a woman's body mm. sells. And that's the idea that's been put out there. Yeah. If you see like a car like directed at men, but they'll use a woman's body to sell it because that's what sells. Mm. And yes, women are being objectified because I don't know, like if you look at social media and stuff, it's all bodies and things. And the pressure now, especially like you have um, celebrities, the figure has become such a there's so much pressure to like how we look and how yeah. we should look as women in today's society mm. that um, people feel the need that that's how they should look. And then the younger girls are looking mm. at it being like, oh, okay, mm. that's what's so important. And then guys on the other hand will look at it and say, this is my expectation. Yeah, this and is what you should look yeah. like. Yeah, but it's almost basically saying that the women are the weaker gender and they are that all they're really good for is having that physique yeah. mm -hmm. and it's a very specific physique as well yeah. but the, what bothers me is when we talk about how society portrays women how they perceives women we only talk about the perception of men when exactly. realistically how do women actually think of other women i don't think women think of other women that well you have someone who support mm. other women regardless of anything but then there's a lot of um jealousy and there's a lot of Criticism. Yes. Women criticize other women. I think that women. it is a generalization. I think that would be a, 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 a okay. generalization. But I think it all goes back to media. Because, for example, yeah. if you go to China or Far East Asia, who are on their magazines or the billboards? It's English, tall, blonde, blue-eyed, white woman. Mm. And this becomes their role model, which is pretty impossible. Or you go to uh, South America, these will be their role models too. And this is what, unfortunately, it's, it's the system, let's be honest. It's... Yeah. We can't really blame anybody um, who's on the lower ground, like men or, or other women within us. It's, it is the system, unfortunately. Even in our communities, yeah. there's a certain yeah. stigma, like there's a certain idea of how we should look. And then there's comparisons, like your own parents will compare you to other people and be like, oh, why don't, why aren't you like this? Yeah, there's that comparison. There's always going to be someone better. Yeah. There's always going to be that person that, you need to be either just like them or better than them. But that's not just about physique. That's also it isn't exactly. It's about their education. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, like you were just saying, their yeah. their job, their yeah. um, studies, their 
even the, the, their family spirit, their friends, the whole lot. Yeah. And it's, I just feel that that is going to take time yeah. because women, they are getting more independent. Yeah. They are, you know, they are trying to get their voices heard yeah. more and more, but it's still there. Women are still the weaker gender or perceived as the weaker gender. And women themselves feel like that in terms of, especially when, okay, well, one of the teachers said, you know, so can I get a few boys to pick up these books? But why can't you ask any of the girls as well? Why does it have to be the boys? Exactly. It's because there's yeah. this assumption that they've got more strength, yeah. which I completely disagree with. Because I, I, because I teach and I can tell you, I had girls who are a lot stronger, more athletic yeah. than some of the boys, yeah. especially within the society that we live in today, because women, like, they are moving up the higher ranks and they are demanding high pay. They're demanding all these things that they think, no, it was mine first. Why should you be getting it? Why are you privileged in any way? But instead of seeing it that way, why don't they just see it as a, as a good thing? Why aren't they proud? Because one day that yeah. person will be their wife. Why aren't they just supportive of it instead exactly. of just being intimidated and putting her down because she's more of a high achiever yeah. than they are? But I'm That's... guessing there are people who are like yeah. that. As yeah. in, we, we can't make that generalization on all the men. But I think it's like you said, it's media. It's yeah. media that really pushes the way people think. And it's difficult to kind of get people to change the way they think yeah. if you don't have control of the media. Definitely. Mm. I think there's a lot of, lot of girls that get desperate um, to change their body and even undergo plastic surgery yeah. at such young ages, which is the, the surgeries that I do are such high risk surgeries. Then there's been such a high mortality as well within those surgeries because they go to places that are cheaper yeah. um, abroad and it's not always the safest and they die on the operating table. Is it really worth it? Is it really worth yeah. it that you would, you know? I've actually known things where like yeah. the parents have actually encouraged their children to do it because they're like, oh, you'll get married more easily. And it's like, yeah, oh, that's so, come up so much. Yeah. And it's like, well, the way you look shouldn't really matter that much. Yeah. It's who you are as a person. How many times do you get guys um, or hearing what guys want as a criteria for girls? And it's like, they've got a long slim, list. Slim, short fair-skinned and god knows what else mm. it's it, all very they have quite isn't it? detailed yeah. boxes yeah. that women yeah. need to check and so it's all superficial yeah. and unfortunately then when people hit the middle ages or even before that yeah. um guys do turn around and tell their wives they don't find you attractive anymore and that That's is when they get that second wife yeah. yeah and that is very or, or god forbid cheat or do yeah. anything else and that is unfortunately very very sad because it shows that the basis why they got married was something completely superficial sure. yeah and if people just start looking at the person who, who their personality their characters the morals who they will be when they raise their children that's what matters yeah that is what's most no important no one cares what your height is when you're going to raise your children let's be honest i think growing up in a muslim household uh lady fatima Islam, like was a big role model for me like my family used to tell me the stories like you know, on her wedding day when she gave away her wedding dress. Mm. And that's something like, you know, every now and then you clear up your household and you give old clothes away. My dad used to be like to me, you're just giving away things you've used already. Yeah. He was like, Lady Fatima Islam gave something she needed and she wanted on that day. So that's charity. The, mm. Her name would, was always ringing. It was always there. So anything that I did, my, my, my family, they always compared it to, the, to what Lady Fatima yeah. was doing. So that story was always there. And so many different other ones. You know, when she did stand up in her, um, and speak in FedEx. Yeah. And that strength, my mom always told me, don't, you know, don't back down. Always yeah. make sure that, you know, you are speaking up for mm. yourself. Don't let people walk over you, but do it at the right time. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people undermine it. We, Unfortunately, we live in this day and age where the generation nowadays kind of dismiss the parents. Like, okay, thank you for letting me grow yeah. up. Thank you for providing everything. Off I go do my own thing now. Um, unfortunately, we've kind of lost that bond, that critical bond where, yes, we might not need them financially anymore. Yes, we could potentially go off and rent our own place and live our own life. But there is that bond, that bond of love and affection that is between yeah. you and your parents and your family that needs to be maintained, that the Ahl bid have showed. And it doesn't start with the children doing it first. It always starts with the parents because you are still young when they're giving you all that love yeah. and that respect mm -hmm. and that affection and you soak it all up and then you just give it back once yeah. you're old enough. And that's, that's beautiful. That's the idea. Like, especially because yeah. the community that we, like the society that we live in now, a lot of like nursing homes and things exist. Whereas mm -hmm. because of our teachings and the way we've been brought up, that doesn't exist in our communities. Like you're expected to take care of your parents, just like 
Um, yeah. Leif Alton Leif Salem took care of Rasulullah when he was near his deathbed. So that is the importance that I think is shown in her character. Yeah, I think we kind of do get lost once we're here in the Western world because And this generation, unfortunately, even within the Iraqi communities, kind of want to keep that balance between still being Iraqi and traditional, but yet Western and other Western, things. Yeah. And that reflects back in how they treat their parents. So if their parents even ask for something very simple or, or they need them to look after them, it's something very simple. I say, oh, sorry, I don't have time or I'm busy doing something else. Mm -hmm. And this is the bit where we've kind of lost. We've lost it because we see it as completely normal around us. And again, it's really back to the society we live in. We might live in a very good, strong Iraqi community here in London, but we can't forget that we're still within the UK, which is a very yeah. Western, Western yeah. lifestyle. And that's where people get lost. And you see within Arab families, and if their parents are sane, and obviously they will reply back to you and tell you off, but if unfortunately they've got an illness, yes, or they're difficult. more vulnerable, and your children are treating you like this, that is horrible. And it's horrible to witness, and there are still people doing this day. Yeah, that's really sad, yeah. yeah. So we all do have our role models in our personal lives that we look up to. Um, and we certainly have some that have led on the journey of the path to become just like uh, Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam. Um, for me personally, it is my mother in all her different aspects of how much she has uh, given up and how much she's been through all the struggles. Because I think we've all been there where our parents have migrated and left um, Araq when we were at very young ages and coming across borders and obviously to, to the Western world, which is not which is not easy and go through that struggle and giving up on your own personal dreams and hopes to give it all to your children and to provide them with that life. Mm -hmm. um, that is something very spectacular that I think we, we kind of take for granted as well. Um, but it's someone that I'll always look up to. Um, I'll always hope to become a mother like this one day to, to be able to give so much to my children. Yeah, I think that's amazing just because for me, it's also my mum. But I also have my sister and I have my grandma and they're the most important women in my life. And it's because of what I've seen them do in their life. So through their struggles, through their patience, um, through the small, simple things that they've been doing, trying to live a simple life, mm -hmm. trying to give charity, trying, you know, to but with my grandma, it's trying to gain more knowledge. And uh, Lady Fatima, alayhi salam, she, she was so knowledgeable, mashallah. Mm -hmm. and my grandma always uses her as an example to make sure that, listen, do your research, learn more. It's not, you should do. And with my sister, she's just amazing at everything. And I, I mean, she, her strength as a woman, especially in the society that she lives in, she lives in Dubai at the moment. And there are so many different struggles from, you know, racism to prejudice. Mm -hmm. And even within the family, she has found a way to deal with that and using her faith. That's what I aspire to be able to do, to use my faith to help me through life. Yeah. And that's what my mom has raised me on. And the fact that she has been so patient in trying to raise me, yeah. that, that's just, she's my role model. I need that patience yeah. when I'm her age, or at least when I'm a mother. Yeah, yeah. and I think the critical point here is faith. Is, yeah. is having that faith deep, deep inside you. That's the way you grow up and that will that will always um, play the bigger difference in how you in how you behave and your patience and how much you will um, stick through through a lot of different difficulties throughout life. And that's what the Ahlul Bayt have. This what Lady Fatima, yeah. their, their full faith and their trust in their Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in his plan. And obviously we all know the tragedy of Karbala and later on what happened is they, they've been through all these tragedies like Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam as well. And they had full faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their faith was never shaken apart. Whereas unfortunately yeah. nowadays, our generations, like especially the generation after us, unfortunately, uh, also known as the slow flake generation, is, is because their faith has become so shaky. Um, it has. Which unfortunately... When we go through a struggle, yeah. out with the first thing that we question is our faith. And it shouldn't be like that. We should use it as our strength yeah. to help us get through it. It said that Lady Fatima alayhi salam is the greatest woman in the heavens and the earth. Um, this to me, I feel so lucky that we have 
this role model to aspire to that she's the greatest woman that we can look up to and we can try and follow in her example. I think as um, Muslim women, we're so lucky to have a role model like that yeah. in today's society. Someone that we can hold on to our faith and hold on to our values. No, I'd agree because I can't imagine having anyone else. I mean, just we needed her to be one of the infallibles just so that we do have someone yeah. to look up to, someone who you know, can actually guide us on how we actually feel and some of the struggles that we actually go through because it is quite different from men. We don't go through the same struggles. Yeah. And it's difficult if we didn't have that, if we, we were restricted and limited from that as well. Mm -hmm. So God is just in terms of, you yeah. know, giving us that support and that guidance. And Lady Fatima, alayhi salam, she, she is the greatest of women. And mm -hmm. it just, to know that, she is my inspiration. She is my role model. Yeah. She is, like, genuinely. SubhanAllah, we, like, God gave us someone that we could relate to. Yes. Like, the men have all the imams. Like, we have Lady Fatima, Islam. Like, we have that idea of, like, what we should be doing. Like, there's so many examples that she's been represented of how we should act as women. Yeah. No, it's true. And, and she wasn't silenced or, like, put down at all. Well, yeah. She was empowered. Exactly. And that's how we should feel. Exactly. And that's why we're very proud to say that we're the followers of the Ahlul Bayt Ali. Yeah, alhamdulillah.